For our second lesson in Module 9, we're going to be looking at properties of reflections. And our goal for this lesson is to understand the properties of reflections and to be able to apply a transformation rule to a pre-image to get an image. We're going to start with some terminology, some definitions, and then we'll look at some examples. We have two terms to look at in this module. Our first term is for the definition of the lesson itself, which is a reflection. And we can define reflection as... A transformation that flips a figure across the, a line. And that, uh, that definition itself leads us to our second term, which is going to be line of reflection, which can be defined as the line over which the figure is flipped. So simply the line that we mirror the image to the other side of it. So one thing I want you guys to note is that each point and its image are the same distance from the line of reflection. You'll see what I mean more by that as we go through some examples. Let's take a look at our first example now. For our first example, we have quadrilateral HOPK, and the directions tell us to reflect the figure across the y-axis. So first thing that we have to do is we have to determine what our line of reflection is. And they tell us right here that our line of reflection is going to be the y-axis. So it's important that we understand that we have our x-axis going horizontally, our y-axis going vertically. So we're going to reflect this image across the y-axis, meaning that we're going to take this figure here and we're going to flip it to get over here. And what we need to do in order to do that was we need to count the distance that each point is from the y-axis. So let's start with point H first. And when we start with point H, Again, we're simply counting the, the distance that point H is away from the y-axis. So if we count from H to the y-axis, we get 1, 2, 3 units from the y-axis. So that tells us that H prime has to be, it's on the same horizontal grid line, but it's on the other side of the y-axis. So from the y-axis, we're going to count 1, 2, 3 units there as well. So H prime is going to go at that point h prime would go right here. So that gives us h prime, and again the reason for that, the distance from h to the y-axis is 3, and staying on the same horizontal grid line, the distance from the y-axis to h prime is also going to be 3 units. Alright, so that's how we get h prime. Let's take a look at finding o prime now. So we start with o's right here, and we see that that is just one unit away from the y-axis, so o prime is also going to be one unit away on the other side of the y-axis. So we'll go ahead and we'll put O prime right here. Next we'll move on to point K. Or let's do point P. Point P we have down here. We see that that is two units away from the y-axis. So for P prime, if the distance from P to the y-axis is two units, P prime also has to be two units away from on the other side of the y-axis. So P prime is going to go right here. Again, we call that P prime. Finally, to find point K prime, we count the distance from K, 1, 2, 3, 4, to the y-axis. So we, we mirror that on the other side of the y-axis, counting again, 1, 2, 3, 4. So K prime has to go right here, four distance on the, four units distance on the other side of the y-axis. So k prime will go right here. And we'll label that point k prime. Now we go ahead, draw lines connecting our four points. And we see that HOPK is a mirror image of H prime, O prime, P prime, K prime. They're the exact same shape they are the exact same size. They do not have the same orientation, though. They're flipped over the y-axis, so they do not have the same orientation. Still same size, same shape, different orientation, though. And we can see, we should hopefully be able to see how our image is a mirror of our pre-image. Let's take a look at another example. For our second example, we have figure RUD. And our directions for this problem tell us to reflect the figure across the x-axis. So for the x-axis this time, we're reflecting the figure across this line here. 
And so what we notice is that the, the figure that we have actually already crosses over the x-axis. Well, that's fine. We still want to count how far each point is away from the x-axis and mirror that distance to the other, sign, other side of the x-axis. So starting with point R right here, we count the distance that point R is away from the x-axis, and we see that that is a dis distance of one unit away from the x-axis. And so we want to mirror that distance to the other side of the x-axis. So if point R is one unit above the x-axis, R prime would be one unit below the, the x-axis. So we would put R prime right here. We will label it R prime. Moving on to point R, moving on to point U, starting right here, we see that point U is one, two, three units above the x-axis. So U prime is going to be one, two, three units below the x-axis. So point, uh, point U prime is going to go right here. And again, we label it U prime. Now with point D, we notice that point D starts off below the x-axis. So point D, one unit below the x-axis. So D prime is going to have to be one unit above the x-axis. So the figures are going to overlap because D prime is going to go right here. And that's all right. The figures overlap. We still call that D prime. Once we have our three points, we go ahead and connect them with straight lines. And there we have our reflected figure across the x-axis. Every single prime point is the same distance away from the x-axis as the original figure point is. So even though the figures overlap, we still have a reflection of triangle RUD across the x-axis, resulting in R prime, U prime, D prime. Let's take a look at one more example, and I'm not sure that you're going to have an example or a problem like this on my HRW, um, but I'm, I'm sure that you're going to have problems like this next year when you get to transformations as a freshman. So let's go ahead and take a look at one more example and look at how we can reflect across a diagonal line. All right, for example three, we're given a figure that is a trapezoid. We're calling that trapezoid VIGS, and we want to reflect the figure across the line y equals x. So unlike the previous two examples, we were told in one problem to reflect across the y-axis, in the next problem we were told to reflect across the x-axis. So the lines of reflection were clear to us. When we reflect, reflect across the y-axis, we just reflect here. When we reflect across the x-axis, we just reflect here. But now for the line y equals x, we're not given that line in this graph. So we have to graph it ourselves. And the line y equals x is a line where we have a slope of 1 over 1 and a y-intercept of 0. So we start at the origin, go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, and we can do the opposite as well. Down 1, left 1, down 1, left 1. And so we see our line, y equals x, taking shape. Use your ruler to draw that line. And so here we have the line y equals x on our graph. And we want to reflect our figure across that line. Now the way that we're going to do that, we're still going to count the distance from each point to the line itself. But then instead of continuing in the same direction, we have to turn, we have to make a right hand or a left hand turn once we get to the line and then count going up or down. Sounds confusing, but let me show you what I mean. Let's start with, let's start with point V. Start with point V right here. And from point V, if we count to the line, we count one, two, three, four, five, six units to the line. Once we get to that line, we don't continue going this way. Instead, once we get here, now we need to turn and go six units down. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so point V is going to end up right here. So here's where we have V prime now. So we did that by counting right to the line and then down. But if you don't want to do that, you can do it the other direction instead. 
from point V, again, we can count down instead. So one, two, three, four, five, six to get to the line. And then we again want to turn and count one, two, three, four, five, six. Either way, we end up at the correct location for V prime. So let's go ahead and take a look at finding I prime. For I, we count our distance to the line. That is one, two, three, four units to the right. So now we want to turn and go one, two, three, four units down. So I prime is going to go right here. And we call that point I prime. And again, if you didn't if you didn't want to count right and then down, you can instead count down and then right. And either way we get to where point I prime is. And if you didn't want to count right and then down, you can instead count down and then right, and you still end up at S prime. Now that we've got our points, <clears throat> we go ahead and draw lines connecting them. Again, you guys are using your straight edge. And we can see the figure V prime, I prime, G prime, S prime is a reflection of the original figure reflected across the line Y equals X. <clears throat> Every single point that we have is the same distance as its image for as the original figure. So the distance from each point in the pre-image is the same distance as the point of the image is. Now if that example is a bit confusing, that's okay. I, again, I don't think that there, you're going to encounter any problems like that in my HRW. Still good to have uh, in the back of your mind for when you get to transformations next year at Lockport uh, because you will be doing transformations again at that time. So that's a quick look at lesson 9.2 on the properties of reflections. Hopefully at this time you guys are able to understand the properties of reflections and you're able to apply a transformation rule to a pre-image to get an image. Write down any questions that you might have and we can talk about them in class tomorrow.